This is interesting. Have you ever heard of LifeWay? They do uh, research. They take polls in the Christian community primarily. So a new poll that came out. You ready for this? It was in the paper. It was in the news this week. Over 50% of Protestant churchgoers, so half the people in this room, failed to share the gospel in the last six months. There should be a big gasp on that one. And it's so, it's so f- funny for me to read all the reasons why, you know, all the excuses and church growth and younger generation and, and uh, the bottom line is men and women are not filled with the spirit of God. That's, that's why this statistic is there. Because when, when the Holy Spirit's in you, you have to proclaim who God is and the truth of God. So here's four, re, four ways that we learned in the past. I want to revisit them again. Why there, you might be lacking spiritual power. This might be mainly to those in the charismatic community. Number one, you want power to impress people. Man, Lord, fill me with your spirit. I would be exalted I would look so spiritual. I've been dying for this. My wife thinks I don't do anything spiritually. Boy, fill me with the Spirit. Let me show her. Or the wife's praying. Oh, let, me, let me just be filled with your power to impress my friends. Or the power to control. We want to control others. We want to control our situation. And, and we want that power of God. Uh, the power to, uh, so we can exalt ourselves. Uh, prove ourselves. Anybody want to prove yourself to your parents or your siblings? I've been down that road many times. Look, at I, look, look, I'm not stupid. Look, I've arrived. Look, I am spiritual. Look, and we want that, oh, Lord, fill me so I can impress these people and show them who I really am. That's not what spiritual power is for. So I'm going to talk to you about three keys To power. Are you ready for this? If you want spiritual power, and again, I don't mean weirdness. I don't mean acting crazy. I mean actually being bold for God, living for God. And it's so true that that saying, I don't remember who said it, but if you're not willing to, to live for Christ today, you're not going to die for him tomorrow. And, if, and this, this boldness is going to be some. I think Christians in our culture today need this boldness. This is why we're the predicament we are in. When did we say the school district can tell our kids what's right and what's wrong and take parental rights away? When did the government tell us that they can murder children? When did, when did, we, when did they redefine marriage, what God's word says? When, when did all this happen? It's happened under the sleeping of the church. No, no, we're not going to say anything. We're just going to love people. That's not biblical. The Bible says to be bold, to contend for truth, to say what is right and what is wrong, to love righteousness. Oh, man of God, what does God require of you? But to love justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before your God. There should be a right standard. There should be a stench in our nostrils when we see the direction of the culture. And then we're supposed to say nothing? The lukewarm church won't say anything. They don't want to upset anybody. Hey, they kind of like this. I'll tell you right now, two groups that will not like this, two groups that do not like Holy Spirit-filled believers are carnal Christians and Pharisees. When you live for, for God and you're filled with the Spirit of God, you want to do, you want to reach out to the homeless. You want to go start a ministry. You want to pass out things at the mall. You want to walk through the stores and pray with people, maybe buy them groceries and you're so filled with the Spirit of God. Your carnal friends will say, who do you think you are? Jesus freak? You ever been called that? You going to leave me hanging out here? Holy roller? Jesus freak, holy roller, super Christian, goody I still don't know what that means, but <laughs> see, they, 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 why don't they like that? Because you're showing them what they lack. Those who do not live for Christ do not want to emulate or be friends with those who do. It's very hard. 
Now, we should encourage those friendships. We need to come alongside those people. Now, but the other side, though, the Pharisee doesn't like this either because they love their Bible, but not people. They love theology, but they'll never go out and do anything for God. They're not filled with his power and his presence. I explained to the first service. I'm glad I remembered this. I want to explain it to you, too. This is just the pep rally. The ball game is out there. 